Hi, I'm George. Um, I'm a carpenter and um, I've had this Pazod IM360 CI for the past six years. Um, it's taken quite a lot of abuse um, and it's gone wrong a few times, so I've nursed it back to health um, just through trial and error, really, trying to figure out what's wrong with it. I've used quite a lot of parts to try and test it from my PPN nailer. They're pretty much identical inside. The only real difference is, is the nose and obviously the magazine clip and the hammer pin inside of it. Um, so whatever I talk about, you can resolve on the 360, pretty much be the same as the PPN nailer. Um, also got the 350 plus, um, which is also a good gun. Um, I've only owned this one about a year and um, I've got the old IM350 just to show the difference in um, the, between the guns, but the old 350 um, shares similar parts to the new 360, whereas some of the parts are slightly different in this new 350. But so if you're looking for parts and stuff, um, it's got rubber O-rings in the old 350, which makes it probably more powerful than the new 350 plus um, and the 360 CI and the PPN nailer they all have rubber o-rings as well which make them more powerful because it's got a better seal for better combustion um, whereas this has more like piston rings so it's it's slightly different but um, still works just as well but it's just not got quite the same power as the 360 but if you do look for parts and you can't find anything for the IM360 CI, if you look for parts on say eBay or whatever, it shares the same O-rings, the original IM350 as the new 360. Um, and also things like the reed valve as well. And there's a few other bits and pieces that might be similar as well. Um, but other than that, yeah, I'll uh, try and rearrange the camera so you can see me strip this gun apart. Um, also to note is these guns are meant to be dry fitted back together um, so once they've been serviced and cleaned you can either use Paslo genuine stuff I think this is about eight quid a, eight quid a can um, which it doesn't go too far but it is good stuff um, or you can use brake and clutch cleaner from tool station which is about three quid and you get 600 mils of that compared to the 150 mil in that um, but I've spoken to a Paslo technician before and apparently that's what they use is just your ordinary brake and clutch cleaner um, so I mean it's a lot cheaper and it does just as good a job and you can use more of it um, but because these guns are meant to be dry fitted back together so that it's no good to spray them with WD-40 and other lubricants inside the gun because it just collects dust and gunk and then the gun just goes wrong again sooner. Um, so in the Pazload gases, the genuine ones, they have a mix of propane and butane in them um, and the butane is used as a lubricant in itself so as the gas fires in the chamber it sort of self lubricates so the more you use in the gun the more it's just constantly lubricating it at the same time um, so but in the obviously in the same with the 350s um, I don't know for other gas brands um, they might just be more propane so you just better check the mix of it when you're using other branded gases um, but other than that, <coughs> I think that's about it. When you do oil the gun, you just use the Pazload oil that your gun usually comes with. And the only place you really need to put this is on that rubber O-rings or on the piston ring. You only need two or three drops and just spin the O-rings around just to lubricate them. It doesn't actually need it inside the chamber from, like I said earlier, because the gas actually lubricates the gun. Um, so I'm going to try and rearrange the camera so you, I, you can see me strip this gun apart and I'll talk you through a few different things that I've found um, to be issues um, through trying to fix this gun. Um, so one thing I'd note is um, if it's your first time ever taking apart your pads load, do not use an impact driver to do it um, because the, one of the first times I tried to undo this gun I used my impact driver and I actually ended up shearing off a bolt inside so um, just use the allen key that it came with 
is probably your best bet to undo it with. Um, you've got Torx head screws that are um, for undoing this part of the shell. But um, I'll just show you quickly the, oops, the 350. Um, if you've taken that apart, which I've already started to do already, you've just got four bolts in the back, and then you've just got two here, and then that comes apart. Once you take that shell off, that comes apart. Um, so I don't know if you can see on the camera, hopefully. Right, there's two metal rings that are here and they've got gaps in them. And I only recently just found out that um, these, the, these rings, where the gap is, where the, there's a split in them, where you, if you ever need to replace them, but the, these rings need to be 180 degrees to each other, so they need to be opposite, because if they're in the same place, it doesn't create a very good seal, and then you end up getting like recoil on the gun. So every time you try and fire in a nail, your gun will bounce back and leave the head of the nail out, um, which is what I've found. So if you are experiencing problems with your gun misfiring or not firing um, at all, um, I'll start with taking the magazine out. So one of the first things I experienced with the gun is I had the nails get stuck behind this um, slider mechanism here so the nails would get trapped behind it and um, the nails wouldn't move up the gun so it wouldn't bump the nails up. Um, so I did have to buy a new magazine for that, which I got off eBay for like 35 quid. So it'll, you could, you'll be able to tell if the nails are getting stuck because you won't be able to pull this slider mechanism back. They'll be jammed behind it and wedged behind where you press this button. There's like a lift, like a little flap um, and the nails sort of get wedged behind there. Yeah, so first things first, strip off the back. <clears throat> um, so <clears throat> in here you've got all the spark plug and everything. Um, what you can do um, if you need to. Um, so one of the first things I found was there's a piece of wire coming out here and you can see hopefully um, where I've resoldered it back together so the gun wasn't firing at all. Um, obviously showed signs that the battery was in and all the rest of it and there was gas and whatever but on the back here one of the first things to check is that this wire I know they are prone to come in loose because I had it on my PPN nailer as well that um, this wire for whatever reason comes loose so it just needs a dab of solder to resolder it back on and then it started working again um, so if I take that apart One of the things I experienced recently was I put brand new gas in the gun and um, it was showing zero gas on registering on the, when you press the button it tells you how much is in it. And um, I eventually figured out it was the antenna. So this, this. So this here, Take the gas out. This here, this green piece here, is called the antenna. So if you're looking for parts, if you type in PAS load IM360 antenna and you are getting that problem, this was a part that I had to replace. Um, uh, so basically, when you load it in, this picks up how much gas is in there. Um, so obviously, for some reason, that was faulty. Uh, I put a new one in that. In there I think I got you can get for 20 quid on eBay I think I paid 35 quid for a brand new one on there um, and that obviously resolved that problem one other uh, thing I was gonna say is if you do happen to need to take the antenna out for whatever reason you do it obviously just by unwinding the screw and doing these wires
It's a bit fiddly. So I'll do that. Um, and one thing to be careful of is obviously this whole piece comes out like that. Um, but when you do go to put it back in, there's like a locating piece of plastic there. You can see this ring of plastic. Make sure you can see a gap. You can see obviously a circle around there, this bit. Um, make sure that locates back into that plastic. So when it all goes back together again, it sort of hooks into place, like slots in, because I didn't do that and I put a gas in and the gas got wedged in and I couldn't get the gas out. And then I ended up pulling it out and ended up snapping this um, gas plug bit here. Um, so just go careful of that. Um, on that, it's quite simple to do. Quite simple to put back together again. So if I strip off this, So one of the things I, another problem was, um, basically, one of the things you can tell is whether it, it's, um, if you're depressing the nose and you aren't getting anything, so you're not getting a fan whir or anything like that, um, it's basically this guy here, the, if I can move that out of the way. See this lever here, so when you depress this, it pushes, let's see if I can, you see like that, it pushes this, paddle here. So it had snapped before this piece. Um, so basically when you're depressing the nose, nothing happens. Um, you pull the trigger and then the fan starts. So you know that your trigger's working. Um, so basically I had to replace this part here, um, which is just a switch. I'll put, um, I'll put up a, a link to schematics on the gun so you can see what parts of what. Um, so basically if you are pushing it down and nothing's happening, you, it's, it's normally to do with this part here which shoots the gas into the chamber and puts the electric through to then fire the gun once you pull the trigger. Um, so another issue I had was this trigger. Um, so I was pulling it back and as you can see here, it pushes this button here which fires the gun. Um, so what was happening was the trigger was getting stuck before it got to that button, whether, I don't know whether it had worn, the button worn down or whatever, but it wasn't pushing that down so the gun wasn't firing. So I bought a new trigger, but this is the old trigger. So what I did temporarily for it to get it to work is I just super glued a piece of plastic on there to give it more of a push to get it over to push the switch. Um, but what I later found is on the switch, um, especially if you uh, on the trigger, sorry, if you buy a new one, there's this piece of plastic here, and uh, what it was, yeah, it's identical now. But the this piece here, this piece of plastic, so the new trigger didn't work either. And I found there was this piece of plastic was further over this bottom bit, and I had to hacksaw it back to make it half because this piece came over too far. Because there's like a stop bit inside the gun to stop it going back any further. So I just hacksawed that bit back um, just to relieve it so that the switch would go, so the trigger would go all the way back and depress it. Um, but obviously quite a simple way of fixing it is just to super glue a piece of plastic onto it if you wanted a quick cheap fix. Um, I'll take this apart. Um, <clears throat> that bit so if I start taking this bit apart so for the boring bit of stripping it there's just a couple of bolts here well there's four bolts put together
Right, <coughs> here's the next bit. So, <clears throat> on your 360, um, it'll probably be in the other chamber actually. Um, if you ever send it off to pads load and they say your chamber's cracked, it normally shows like there's a crack down this piece here. Um, that's not actually an issue. Um, and they'll probably charge you about 300 quid to replace that, this chamber bit. But actually if the pin's still intact, you might just need, if it's not, you just need to replace this pin here. Um, but if it's not, uh, if it does have a crack down here or this bit here, it's not actually an issue. The gun still does work, still does work as long as this pin is still holding it all together. The fracture in that chamber bit doesn't actually have to do with anything firing. Um, so, yeah, the next part is um, you literally just pull that pin out and that pin out, um, and then just down to this part here. So if you get an issue with your gun. Um, it, it fires um, and it just and the this pin gets stuck every time you fire it um, and then you have to push it back and then you fire it again and it still does it basically that's normally to do with the reed valve which is un located under here um, so if I take that out you should be able to see it and so if you look up the part online or on eBay, it's called the reed valve. Um, so under here, yeah, it slides off. This piece here, this is the reed valve. And um, it basically one of these or many of these might be snapped off. So basically what it does is it goes over the top of there and it lets gas in and out. Um, and obviously if one of those is gone, it's not gonna push it back and all the rest of it. Um, so if you are experiencing that problem, that will probably be the part that needs to be replaced. Um, another one to note is, um, so if you are getting your gun, um, keep misfiring nails, it just keeps coming out um, and missing the nails totally, and you just keep getting an imprint of the head. I had that issue in my PPN nailer, um, and basically the this nose bit, um, wasn't wound in enough so it somehow come loose so in here you can see it's got a um like a what do you call it like a thread on it and it basically screws in um so if i can strip that apart and show you i will Basically, if you do need to screw it back in, push the chamber all the way back out, and uh, you basically just got to you'll just be twisting it round until it tightens up again. Um, and do make sure it goes back the right way. So when you go to put it all back together again, make sure that this is laying flat, um, so it goes back into the chamber properly. Um, if I show you on this gun so I don't know if you can sit here but that's the pin there um, and I did find that was really worn down so when I had it stripped apart I just got my angle grinder and just grinded it back flat again because I think it was just skimming over the top of the head of the nail which you probably won't get that problem with the 360 but if you do have that problem with your PPN nailer that's probably what it is as well so I just flattened it off slightly just to give it a better chance of that it doesn't skim over the top of the head of the nail when it's, it's coming, as it's, the head of the pin's coming down. But hopefully, um, after seeing how that works and whatever, it might be helpful to you. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it other than that. Um, 